another topic. Welcome to the microcommunication course. So today we will learn the a rectangular cavity here. So now a rectangular cavity. As we know that a rectangular waveguide, that mouth end of this rectangular waveguides are open here. Or we need to provide input here and we need to take out output here from this rectangular waveguide. This is like just like a one transmission line. It acts as a, a transmission line. Okay. So in that case, we providing input from one end and we'll get output at another end. That is about a line, okay, transmission. But in the case of a cavity, these two ends of this rectangular waveguide are closed one. Okay, these two ends of this rectangular waveguide are closed. So means what is the meaning of this? Means it's just like a rectangular waveguide, but the two ends are closed one. So we say that it is a metallic enclosure and that a metallic enclosure, it confines a electromagnetic energy. So these two ends are closed here so that in that particular rectangular cavity or that cavity structure, it confines some particular energy and that energy in the form of what electric energy or we can say that in the form of a magnetic energy so means we say that em energy okay we say that it has a em energy now em energy means what it has a stored electric energy and it has a stored magnetic energy and that energy of this particular cavity that will be confined inside this particular cavity and that can be obtained through the equivalent circuit of this particular cavity and that equivalent circuit of a cavity consists of a inductance and a, a capacitor now this if supposed to be Consider this particular cavity. Now in a rectangular waveguide, that frequency, resonant frequency or a cutoff frequency of a guide, it is totally depending upon that width and a height of a guide. But here, a one more component is to be considered. That is a length of this particular cavity. That is a D here, supposed to be considered. Means inside the cavity, we say it has a stored energy, or inside this particular cavity, that energy dissipated by this conducting wall of this cavity that can be obtained through the whatever the resistance of this particular walls, or we can say that equivalent resistance of this particular cavity there. So this particular cavity has a resonating frequency and that resonating frequency is depending upon that size or dimensions of the, the cavity there. And this cavity is used to obtain the or used in a various applications and that very where various application means at particular resonant frequency when we propagating any signal through the cavity and that input signal is equal to the input signal frequency is equal to the resonant frequency so in that case there will be a standing wave occur and because of that standing wave occur so then there will be a maximum peak of what we can say a standing view occurs and that maximum peak provide the energy stored in the electric or a what you can say that a magnetic field and both the fields are equal inside this particular cavity. 
so this particular phenomena is to be used in a frequency meter or you can say that wave meter so that cavity when we supposed to propagate any signal and that resonating frequency signal resonating frequency of the cavity and signal frequency match so then standing wave occurs so there is no output across that particular wave meter okay deep occurs so that all the cavities they are different resonating frequency as well as we can say that that cavity is work at a different different modes there based on the different modes operating modes of the cavity so the same concept we apply for the rectangular waveguide earlier we say that a dominant mode inside this particular rectangular waveguide is nothing but what a lowest it has the lowest cut off frequency so similar in a rectangular cavity here so dominant mode in a cavity is nothing but what it has a lowest resonating frequency suppose i consider that your wave is propagating that is about we say in terms of x y and this is about a z direction okay likewise that is about a z now okay this is nothing but a z direction so that is about a propagation similar kind of a guide now now here the modes are depending upon that a b and a, a d now so for that purpose we should know that what are the equations for the electric field component and a magnetic field component so for a t mode or a tm mode the same concept we say that for a t mode means what it has a z is equal to 0 so all the components are depending upon that sz there so we should know that what do you mean by the sz here so sz is equal to what a h of z cos of m pi x by a then cos of n pi y by b then a sign of p pi z by d now if you see this term hoz that is nothing but a magnitude of a field component this cos of m pi by x and this m pi by a is nothing but a kx n pi by b is nothing but a ky another term is adding here because a rectangular cavity again it is depending upon that what will be the that length of the cavity that is about a d here so then your field component is again depending upon that another component that is pi p pi z by d that p pi d that is again another component means here we say the modes if it is a t mode here because this one is about a t mode expression so in that case m is equal to 0 for the t mode earlier we have used but here in the rectangular cavity m will start from the 1 to 3 likewise similarly n will start from the 1 to 3 likewise but p will start from the 0 1 to this like that okay so here this factor of a k it depends upon what kx this is right here k square is equal to what m pi by a plus n pi by b plus p pi by t all are bracket square that is about a k square so from this k we can calculate that a resonating frequency because we say that k is equal to what k square is equal to omega square mu of naught. so the resonating frequency of a guide is depending upon this 
f r is equal to 1 by twice of under root mu epsilon into under root of m by a bracket square plus n by b bracket square plus b by d bracket square. Okay. Or this one. So means I'll rewrite here again. Okay. So I'll just rewrite the all the equation. Now m pi by a. So that is about what we can say earlier. M is nothing but what? The number of half wave variation in the x direction. So this is about x direction, that's about m. M pi by a. So n is nothing but what? Number of half wave variation in the b here. And then this factor p. That is about the number of half wave variation in the z direction. Likewise. So means all the three dimensions, all these three sides of the cavities, there is a half wave variation. Okay. Half wave variation of your field there. And now for this, we say that m will be 1, n will be 1, but p will start from the 0. So we say earlier that is about it. For this rectangular cavity, we supposed to write the expressions here for the T mode of a propagation and a TM mode of a propagation. So similarly, we say that a T, E, M, N, and P. So this M is half wave variation with the A. This is about half wave variation B. This one is about the half wave variation in the direction of X, the direction of Y the direction of its head. Okay, that is about width side, height side, and D side. And we suppose to say the resonating frequency that is about 1 by 2 under root of V epsilon into under root of M by A bracket square M by B bracket square plus P by D bracket square. That is M half a variation and half a variation along with the Y, P half a variation along with the Z there. So this way we'll get that a resonating frequency for the T mode there. Okay, resonating frequency for the a T mode. So similarly we can calculate the okay for the TM mode resonating frequency will be the same. But for the TM mode, if it is a TM mode of a propagation there, so in that case, SZ is equal to 0. So then, we need to know about that a field component EZ here. So E0Z sign of m pi x by a into sine of n pi x by b to cos of p pi z by d. Okay, so here we have the term sine, 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 m pi by a n pi by b that is nothing but a kx we say ky that is nothing but a kz k p pi by b. and similarly we say that a k factor that earlier we we have written that k square is equal to what m pi by a sorry n pi by d plus pi by b, p pi by d, bracket. Similarly, we can calculate that resonating same, that resonating frequency for the T mode and ATM mode, both are same here. But only the change is that, okay, so if we suppose to be consider the different modes, T mode or ATM mode, so M, 0, 
1 2 3 then 0 1 2 3 p will be a 1 2 3 for the tm mode that m will be start from the 1 2 3 n will start from the 1 2 3 and p will start from the 0 1 Likewise, okay. We just remember this is about the T mode and the TM mode. So M will start from the 0, 1, 2, 3. Same for the T mode. There earlier we have seen that start from 0, 1, and M and N start from the 1 here for the TM mode. Already we have seen. Then how to excite these rectangular cavities? Okay, how to excite this particular rectangular cavity? So the same way. We should know that that excitation so that is about we need to use a probe and then we should know that where is your maximum electric field and where is your maximum magnetic field there and the dominant mode here that is about a T101 is a dominant mode So dominant mode means what? That is mode it has a lowest resonant frequency. Okay, it has a lowest resonant frequency. So where when we are, will get that dominant mode? When we have that A is greater than B, but both are getting that is about a DF. So in that case, we'll get the dominant mode. It has a lowest resonant frequency. So how to excite the this particular cavity? For this rectangular cavity section here so we should know that how we supposed to be provide the field component now this is about your e here okay this is about your e and a magnetic field component so like this one is about your h now we supposed to be consider a given particular input from the pole here so this one we supposed to be provide the input here from this end this is about your probe here we supposed to be consider the input that is about the method of excitation from this end or we supposed to excite the guide from this end we supposed to be considered the probe here okay this guy from this end or that end so both the end we can excite this rectangular cavity there for each and every rectangular cavity section that it has a different resonating frequencies and that resonating frequency is depending upon the variations of what we can say that a b and a d here that is about your size of a rectangular cavity there. This one is about your rectangular cavity supposed to be considered. And these walls here, these are the closed ones. These are about the closed one for this rectangular cavity. Okay. So it means your power will be confined inside this particular cavity. Now there are the various types of a cavity. Okay, that there are the various shapes of the cavity. So we can say that various shape we learn here, there. When we, we learn the micro tubes, so this one is about reentrant cavity is supposed to be considered. This one is about a cavity shape here, and this type of a cavity is to be used in a magnetron. That is about a cavity. Likewise, so there are the various types of a cavities 
we will learn in a tube step. Okay, so that cavity is have a applications for storing the energy. They have the applications in a wave meter there, and that cavities are easy to couple, and that cavities can be used to take out the output signal from those particular cavities there. They have the different different shapes there for this rectangular cavity. Okay, so that's all about your microwave cavities here for this tutorial session. Okay, thank you all of you.